Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back once again to the Tanks World Podcast. I'm here with Protomet again. Hi. And we're talking about another Tony Todd movie. Yes. Candyman. He's awake, Scoob. What? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, yeah, Candyman. Um, starts off with, um, two girls working on a thesis, schoolwork of some sort. I think they're postgrad students <laughs> at a university in Chicago. 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 Not is the Illinois. It is in Illinois, yes. <laughs> Chicago, <laughs> Illinois. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, they're working on uh, myths, or not myths. Urban legends. That's the word. Urban legends, and they decide to pick the urban legend of Candyman. Which gets recounted to us with uh, a scene that features Ted Raimi. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Ted, yeah, Ted Raimi's in this movie. For one scene. Um, so pretty much they... The story, the story goes is that, uh, this guy <laughs> went to, uh, meet up with his girlfriend while she was babysitting. <laughs> and they were getting ready to go shaboink shaboink. And while they were getting ready, she recounted the tale of Candyman, which was basically an equivalent to Bloody Mary, where yep. if you say Candyman's name five times in a mirror while it's dark, mm -hmm. and <laughs> they... he supposedly appears. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so they're starting to get a little bit frisky by saying his name. They get to four, and the guy, and Ted Raimi just pretty much chickens out on it. But then she. He leaves, goes downstairs, so she is getting dressed. And, and she decides to say it the fifth time. And then he shows up and uh, kills her and the baby. Yep. <laughs> or at least that's how the legend goes. Yes. <laughs> um, they... And it... Yeah. Let's see. Two women are Helen Lyles and her friend Bernadette. <laughs> yep. Helen and L Bernadette are asking different students about uh, the legend of Candyman to get more information. Well, the whole idea being that they're trying to just uh, see how far spread this, this story is mm -hmm. just on its own without anybody thinking about it. Thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which kind of gets undercut when uh, Helen's boyfriend, uh, her husband, yeah. uh, college professor, starts talking about urban legends in his class. <laughs> like the myth of flushing down baby alligators. In the toilet. Yep. Like one saying it was Miami, another person saying it was New York. I read it in the paper. But is it real? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you read it in the paper. That must mean it's true. <laughs> <laughs> or like looking up on the internet or something. Yeah, it's like the equivalent of don't believe everything you read on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> so, they... Something which is a lot more relevant these days. <laughs> exactly. So they end up go. Well, they start talking and... She kind of berates him for doing a urban, urban myth or urban legend, even though her she she had asked him to hold off until next semester so that she and Bernadette could finish mm -hmm. their thesis. <laughs> but apparently, he got caught up on things, and it it was literally the only thing he could do next. So he couldn't just uh, hold back his students. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which fair enough, I mm. guess. <laughs> yeah, they. Okay. Then she, she's uh, typing on her computer. An old computer, by the way. While listening to a recording of one of the 
other one of the recountings of the story mm-hmm. when one of uh, the cleaning staff come in and hear her, it's like oh that sounds familiar I think uh, uh, I think another one of the one no. of the, my co-workers is talking about that and the other cleaning lady comes in and t- tells her portion of it which is about a woman who called the cops because she kept hearing noises thinking that Somebody was going to come kill her mm-hmm. through the her, through her mirror, mm-hmm. and they kind of ignored, wrote her off as crazy, <laughs> until she actually died. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and Helen actually shows Bernadette how that could have happened because, as it turns out, on the other side of her uh, medicine cabinet it was a path to uh, another, another apartment. apartment. <laughs> Yeah, there was a whole style theory talking about all this, which... Yeah, and this kind of made me want to do Candyman. <laughs> which proved to be a good excuse for me to finally watch this movie. <laughs> yes. It... So I'm glad for that. <laughs> and this this particular story is based on a real event. <laughs> yes. Also, the movie as a whole itself is based on a story by Clive Barker, who acts as the producer for this film. Um... Number of details were changed between that and the story, The Forbidden. Mm. So, um, Helen, then Helen and Bernadette are looking in the. Okay, Bernadette pretty much tells um, Helen, "Is like, what are you doing? What if they're on the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> there is nobody that lives there." <laughs> Um, so they take the medicine cabinet out and then they put it back in and then they start saying candy man. The bird that chickens out and only does it four times while Helen does it the full five times. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after she actually says it the five times they end up going to different um, I, I would have to say the the ghetto of they go to Cabrini Green, which is a real housing project in Chicago. Okay. So, <laughs> this movie does actually have some actual history to it. <laughs> because that's where the actual murder that they are inve- that they decide to investigate as being potentially the source of the urban legend stems from. Yep. And it is definitely a rough part of the neighborhood. Yeah. So, um, they're, they're dr- driving and... Helen looks over at Bernadette and she's got multiple different things of pepper spray. And, well, it, it's it kind of the sketchier neighborhood, so it's, she's just being prepared. Then, yeah, uh, 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 part of the theme of this film is the racial inequality yes. as a result of the housing projects in addition to the urban legend of uh, mm-hmm. a lady being killed by somebody through her mirror, mm-hmm. which wasn't an urban legend that actually happened, but it's an urban legend based on that actual incident. Yeah. <laughs> so, Helen and Bernadette go to uh, that to Brainy Green. <laughs> yeah, and you know, right away they're like you know, every, right away the. People that are living there are like, yo, Popo coming, Popo coming. Because they think they're cops. And <laughs> <laughs> so Helen just starts taking pictures of like graffiti. And On the walls, the, uh, sweet to the sweet. <laughs> yep. And that gets a reaction from one of the uh, residents. <laughs> yep. And her dog. <laughs> kind of scare them off. <laughs> yep. Whoa, sorry. <laughs> Before they finally head to the... Uh, the apartment where it actually occurred. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> they they go in and Bernadette's like like you can't just go in there. You know, somebody died in there, you know, just <laughs> It had been long enough uh, ago that yeah. nobody was still around. So yeah. No police were involved mm-hmm. anymore, so they Yeah. And it, it looked disgusting inside there, but yeah, they probably never really cleaned anything. No. <laughs> Unfortunately, those kind of places aren't 
exactly the most well maintained, no. even when people are living there. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, yeah, and that's just due to you know the racial inequality. Yeah, the government not really giving a damn. <laughs> It's like what? It's housing. Yeah. Deal with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was a different time. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, Helen, they open up the mirror and find that yes, there is a big hole leading into another adjacent apartment. Yeah. And Helen decides to climb in against Bernadette's uh, wishes. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I'll be right. I gotta go back in. I ran out of film. No, we are leaving right now. Yeah, no, Helen goes in and starts taking pictures of some of the graffiti inside there, including, like, a, a huge, huge, more, uh, a huge mural. mouth. A huge mural of a guy with a no gaping mouth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she ends up uh, just staring at it, and it awkwardly seems hypnotized. She was going. She was planning on taking a picture of it, but her camera ran out of film just before she entered the room. Yep. And then she goes back through, and then, like I said, there, they gotta leave, and then they get uh, talked to by one of the residents who are wonder. Oh, Anne Marie McCoy. Yeah. Who is wondering what they're doing there? Mm-hmm. And they they do explain their situation that they're they're not there for any nefarious purposes. They're just grad students. <laughs> yeah, just trying to work on their thesis. Ryan Marie's get, got her own kid, Anthony, to take yeah. care of. Mm-hmm. So they get to talking a bit before Helen and Bernadette you, uh, leave. You, saying you white folks just bring trouble around here. <laughs> Pretty much, just. Now, well, Bernadette is uh, fine with just letting everything stand here and yeah. just going with the thesis that, as they've got it. Mm. Helen decides to investigate it a bit more and uh, ends up meeting a little boy named Jake mm-hmm. who knows the legend of Candyman. Mm-hmm. And apparently a little a little boy had to use the restroom, but his, her, his mom was too busy shopping and told him to just go across the street. And the boy got his genitals torn off. Yep. By the Candyman, apparently. Yeah, apparently, yeah. <laughs> Which, that part of it was actually based on a story that uh, Clive Barker's grandma told him about. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> just, to, just to scare the kid, I believe, I think, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's a bit of detail about, real world detail behind that. Just <laughs> so, Helen ends up going into this disgusting bathroom. Like, extremely, like... Who everywhere. Like, just used to... You could tell that that's what was used to write the, some of the messages yeah. on the wall. Like, two of two of the toilets are destroyed, and, yeah. and the third is just... <laughs> yeah, that's like, just on the door, and just on the wall, and then all of a sudden she's just taking photos, and then... Uh, some thugs come in. And then, uh, pretty much is are playing candy. One of them got a hook for a hand. That's just a plain hook. Uh, yeah, but yeah. he's got he's he's wearing it. He's holding it as though it were a hook for a hand. Yeah, he's basically playing the physical manifestation of Candyman. And she gets beaten pretty much. But she goes to the cops after she wakes up. Yeah, just the hugest swelling goose egg on the side of her face. It's just like oi. And the fact that she's willing to talk about her experience is how the cops managed to catch the guy yeah. and link him to the murder that took place in the apartment. Mm-hmm. And all is f- f- fine and well and the movie's over, except no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. It's It continues on due to... Uh, then Jake's like, I want to go home. Like he, he he lives in the part of town where he they don't trust the police, pretty much. <laughs> right. <laughs> Plus, he doesn't want to get uh, like in trouble for t- telling. Yeah. And Helen told him that he that they keep it a secret between the two of them. Yeah. But because Jake, they don't since the cops don't need Jake's testimony, mm-hmm. he's free to go. Yeah. Since they've got Helen's, and that's all that that's all that they need. Mm-hmm. Jake is left to go home. Mm-hmm. Helen ha- heads home. Um, her wound ends up healing quite. Her head. Or his, her swelling. The black eye. Yeah. Um, yeah, so 
her and Bernadette meet up, you know, but first, actually, prior to that, uh, she makes a very good meal for her husband, apparently. Her husband, Trevor. Yep. Who, it, at the, who earlier on had been talking with some students, and one of them seemed to be a bit... I'm uh, um, kind of uh, infatuated with him. This is some plot point we will discuss later. You can probably guess where it's gonna where it's gonna go. But. Yeah. <laughs> so Helen ends up making them like suppers or something, and then she takes a bath of some like I think. Uh, then she meets up with Bernadette when she's more a hundred percent healed. And Bernadette gives her a bunch of slides that were made from the pictures that were <laughs> taken in the in Cabrini Green. Mm -hmm. Then, or at least the ones that uh, were salvageable. Yeah. And then we actually uh, they go to their different uh, um, parking lots where they had their Bernadette meet. leaves, and as Helen is heading to her car, and then a mysterious robe, big coat wearing figure. Approaches her. It's like <laughs> seductively, very, just like, be my victim. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just gonna say right now, Tony Todd plays this character perfect. Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You really can't imagine very many other people being able to pull this off. He uh, does such a fantastic job with this. Yes. Um. So he pretty much talks, hypnotizes her, very seductively. And, then and when she, she wakes up, she is covered in blood in Anne Marie's apartment. The dog has been decapitated. She's got a butcher's knife, and Anthony is missing. Like, yep. And this all happens so rapidly <laughs> that <laughs> Helen doesn't really know how to process it. Exactly. And then she accidentally, like, uh, Anne Marie starts attacking her because. <laughs> Yeah. She thinks Helen's responsible, and for all intents and purposes, Helen's responsible. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we don't know if she did the deeds. It could have... It, we, we don't know. We but just... Helen, with the cleaver in her hand, attacks Anne-Marie, injures her arm. <laughs> but at the same time, the cops show up, and at the, she, she ends up dropping the like um, butcher's knife, and then... And Marie starts to come after her with the Basically, butcher. the cops have to restrain Anne Marie. Yep. <laughs> what? Well, well, screaming, what? Asking what happened to her baby. Mm -hmm. And at this time, after this, she is at the police station, having to disrobe because she is covered in blood. It is an absolutely humiliating experience. Yes. Which, given, I, that I, the, given that the actress is white. Yeah. Is probably meant to be reflective of how uncomfortable black people have yeah. to be, yeah. have to experience this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. even on far lesser charges. Yeah, it's well, like you know, you need to. They have to technically spread private, uh, you know, things. <laughs> we also forgot to mention a part of the Candyman lore that got introduced earlier, when uh. uh Trevor mentions well, when they're at like a dinner ah, with yes. some other professors. Trevor mentions that Helen and Bernadette are working on a, the Candyman story, and one of the other professors expounds more on the Candyman legend, saying that uh, the story had first popped up in the late 1800s about a, a, a former slave, the son of a former slave who was well educated. Mm -hmm. And fell in love with a white woman, only to wind up being lynched, yep. uh, brutalized, and had bees cut, smothered uh, all over him. A, they cut his hand off his, because he was a, a very good painter, and he wanted the the um, white man wanted the him to paint his daughter's virginity awkwardly. Okay. That's the words they said. Okay, <laughs> her, her virginity, virgin. Um, beauty or something or something like that and uh they he does she doesn't stay a virgin for long apparently and then that's when uh he has the ruffians rough him up and cut a up. lynch mob yeah. it's, not a, it's not ruffians it's a lynch mob <laughs> <laughs> they you know beat him cut off his hand cover him with honey and the whole bunch of bees just swarm 
stinging him to death. Yeah. <sighs> Graphic. We don't really see much, but they they tell more in the second movie. <laughs> uh, eventually, Helen is let out of prison on bail, mm-hmm. and she goes back to her apartment and decides to look through the uh, the slides that Bernadette had given her to try and find any evidence of Candyman and. She does manage to find him in one of the barely recovered photos. Mm-hmm. It's like she has to zoom in like multiple a, times just to just get... the focus mm-hmm. before finally seeing. Oh, that's the that's the guy I saw in the parking lot before this whole this whole thing happened. Yep, and then he ap- keeps appearing. He to... appears to her in the apartment and basically tells her that. Because he had become a legend, he was b- practically immortal. Mm-hmm. And when she dispelled the legend by getting the fake Candyman mm-hmm. caught by the police, mm-hmm. he needed her to participate in order mm-hmm. to keep his legend alive yeah. so that he could ostensibly live forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, so during this time, he has um, Bernadette c- comes to their apartment and he tears her up. While Helen is is slightly paralyzed due to the hypnosis, yep. which apparently was the result of some actual hypnosis, they actually did uh, hypno, hypno, slightly hypnotize the actress. So she was kind of more confused in in a she... trance. It, she was in te- Virginia Madsen was intentionally left in a trance for these scenes. Oh, okay. Or at least in a trance-like state, okay. which adds to the uh, believability of what's going on. Yep. So, Trevor co- comes home, sees Bernadette's dead body, comes in, and she sees Helen laying on the kitchen floor with a butcher's knife. <laughs> so, it just makes her seem more like the killer than the actual Candyman. <laughs> and she is uh, taken by the police and taken to a, a police hospital and restrained. Mm-hmm. And while she is restrained on a table, Candy Van appears to him again to taunt to, her. To her to him. So then she starts freaking out to try and alert the guards. He hides under the bed, and they sedate her yep. without him ever being found, as she finds out a month later. Yeah. They have apparently, every single time she, she'd be off that thing, she would see him apparently and be like. Well, I, she. She'd been so sedated for the past month. She had, for her, she didn't even realize that a month had had yeah. passed, because she kept flipping out. So at the time, she is, I guess, being talked to by this. I'm thinking he was a psychiatrist. Yeah, the sort. psychiatrist of the institute. It's like she says, "I can summon him here." And she... He even goes as far as to try and help her realize that it's not tr- that. It's all in her imagination by showing her the video of the night she was taken in and how Candyman is nowhere to be seen in any any of the footage. And uh, she, she ends up saying his name five times and he appears behind the um, psychiatrist and rips him groin to chin. From behind. <laughs> yes. Now he, he stabs him in the back with his hook. Mm-hmm. Like it's, a, it's a brutal scene. Yeah. Uh, gullet to chin, pretty much. Or no, yeah. Growing to gu- growing to gullet. Yeah, that's the word. But that's again, he he attacks him from behind. I think you're thinking of uh, a line that Tony Todd says earlier in the movie, uh, towards the beginning of the movie. Maybe. Um. Yeah. So he like looks like he gets sucked out of the window. <laughs> Just like, and unfortunately, because. The whole thing left a huge noise. It means that the police or the cops who are in the in the mental institution are alerted and come to. Uh, but before, after um, Candyman kills the guard, she, he frees Helen from her restraints. So she escapes through the window he bursts through. Mm-hmm. And then she climbs over... Like shimmies to the other thing, and they have a cleaning lady that she kind of. No, I'm pretty sure that's one of the nurses. Oh, it could be. <laughs> Look, checking out on one of the patients, mm-hmm. and she sees Helen at the window, 
and tapping, like wanting to be led in. She's like, "What? Where's she bringing her in?" Unaware of what Ted just transpired yep. so close, and then she pretty much knocks her out. Takes Steals her clothes. And we just see the crazy guy just laying in his bed seeing all this thing kind of go up. He's like, what's going on? <laughs> so she manages to escape from the Institute without being discovered and make, makes it back to her apartment. And uh, Except she, it's no longer her apartment. It's, it's the apartment that Trevor is now sharing with his new girlfriend. Yeah. Couldn't even wait until Helen was dead or it, or permanently institutionalized before moving in on her, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Which, <laughs> it's a tense scene. Yeah. But it's like Helen finally becoming detached from everything. Every, everything that she had in her life has now been taken from her. Mm -hmm. Her love life, her friend. Yep. Her sanity. Mm hmm all that's left is to now confront Candyman, who has been ask, asking her to become his victim in exchange for the life of the baby. Yeah. Um, so she goes through the... Like, the hole again. Like She returns to Candyman's lair <laughs> to confront him. Finds a, a hook and tries to stab him in the neck and he, he just kind of wakes up and has no effect. So Candy, Candyman kind of hip, hypnotizes her again, and it's kind of a in, interesting moment because it, it, she it, is being slightly seduced to be also at the same time. Yeah, she's she's hypnotized and being seduced into falling for Candyman. <laughs> yeah, and they start. So pretty much, he opens up his mouth, and a bunch of bees start to fill it. And start pouring out onto, mm -hmm. Helen. onto Helen. And which she, fun fact? Uh, those were actually baby bees, mm -hmm. re, newly newly hatched larvae. Okay. Or not well, like, they were fully formed bees, but they hadn't fully matured. And that was because it because Helen needed to ha because uh, oh god, what's her name? Virginia needed to have them all over her face, yeah. despite being. Very allergic to stings. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so they were adult bees, but like just turned to adults. So they so didn't the have their singers. Mm, okay. Well, Tony Todd had like a, a mouthpiece in his mouth. <laughs> like there's like, oh God, how many bees? <laughs> it's just a lot of bees. So many bees. <laughs> 200,000 real honeybees were used throughout throughout most of the scene. <laughs> God damn. Like, the ca the crew working on it had to wear bodies to protect them. <laughs> and Todd, Todd even, Tony Todd even managed to negotiate $1,000 for everything he received. So he got $23,000 for that scene alone. <laughs> <laughs> Good for him. But, um... So pretty much, they they end up like kissing. She he put he starts spitting bees all over her face, yep. <laughs> swarming her. He opens up his coat to reveal his rib cage, yep, that, just absolutely covered with honeybees. Mm -hmm. And then she finally she, recoils in horror. Yep, snaps out of it. And then he, she I think she slightly runs off. Or she kind of, yeah. Because then Candyman grabs the baby and ends up putting it in the... In a in a, in a pile of uh, wooden furniture and debris yeah. that, had been, that had been established earlier in the film to be the kindling for a bonfire that was going to be happening um, soon. I kind of take it as a, like, a wicker man situation. Kind of, except I, I don't think the intention was to, you know... Yeah. Play out that scenario. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if a candy man gets in, they're setting the fucker on fire. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, again, part, part of part of, part of Candyman's whole deal in this is to keep people believing in him. Yeah. To, he basically considers the people who spread the rumor as part of his flock. Those who actually believe the rumor. Mm -hmm. Um... And in this whole scenario, he's trying to lure Helen into becoming part of the le urban legend. Yes. So she and 
Well. Well, she she hears the crying baby, realizes it's out in the bonfire kindling, and yeah. using the hook manages to climb into it to try and rescue the baby. Mm-hmm. And then, like, as the time, Jake is looking over his, like, oh, I, like, her patio area or whatever, and he sees oh, Helen's hook, and he, she th- he thinks it's Candyman, and he starts the the mob to come out and set the thing on fire. So, now there's a huge bonfire. Yep. Helen has Anthony, And she's shimming her way out and uh, trying to put more distance between her and her and Candyman. Mm -hmm. Um, Candyman does get a hold of her at one point, and then she grabs a big piece of, like, a sharp piece of wood and jams it into his, like, stomach. And then they tried to... She tries to... Shimmy away through the... Tries to crawl her way through the debris uh, as low as she can. And uh, the fire ends up getting her. She ends up... Pinned to the ground, but... it She manages to break free because of how weakened the structure had yeah. become from the fire. Mm-hmm. And she manages to save Anthony, though, at the cost of her own life. Yes. <laughs> sure, she loses her hair. She, like, her whole back is just... Blistered and... Burnt, burnt, scarred. scarred. It's, it's like <laughs> a slightly more beautiful Freddy Krueger. Yes. <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> like her face didn't get touched at all. Okay, she was keeping her face close to the ground mm-hmm. during the whole situation, yeah. so. Uh, she gets out and. Um, not Mary Beth. Um, uh, Anne Marie. Anne Marie sees that she has Anthony out of the fire and then they. Like praise her, but she does die t- because of her wounds, and who won't? <laughs> so they hold a funeral for her, and just just as she's being lowered into the ground, a whole of the residents, a whole, a whole group of the residents of Cabrini Green come to pay their respects mm-hmm. to this woman. Yep, and uh, Jake ends up dropping the, can- hook. the candy man's hook <laughs> into the grave with her, <laughs> and. You know, we get uh, Trevor. We're back at Trevor and his girlfriend's apartment, and after he's the, after coming back from the funeral. Which he is, is uh, grieving in the bathroom, while his girlfriend is just kind of it's like, "Say, do you want to eat? What do you want to eat? You gonna come out and help? You can't just stay in the bathroom." You you can kind of tell that he's regretted. He, yeah, he has regret. He has regrets over how this whole situation turned yeah. out and how he basically turned his back on Helen when she was so good to him. Mm-hmm. And uh, pretty much, she she starts tries to start uh, supper, but he starts saying Helen's name five times, and then he turns off the light. And then she shows up and kills him. Yep. Having become basically the new equivalent to the Candy Man. Mm-hmm. And the movie ends. Well, yeah, the girlfriend finds the mutilated corpse of her boyfriend <laughs> of Trevor in the bathroom. Yep. And we, the the film ends with a, a slow zoom in on a new mural inside the Candy Man lair of Helen with her head up with her hair on fire. Mm-hmm. In a more an, angelic pose. Yeah. And also, I forget we forgot to mention this that when she finally makes it back to Candyman's lair for the final confrontation, it turns out she may or may not have been re- the reincarnation of of the lady that Candyman fell in love with back in the eighteen hundreds. Could have been, and that this whole time he was trying to pull her back in because it was because it was her. Yeah, <laughs> because she was the the woman he had fallen for back then. <laughs> Yeah, because everyone else he just straight up kills, like, and they, like he just scares her. <laughs> like she he cuts her a little bit on the neck, but it's never a full blown. That's because he's mostly using her to rekindle his legend in the mm-hmm. eyes of the faithful. Oh yeah, <laughs> while while at the same time trying to, mm-hmm. you know, manipulate her. Oh yeah, she. She played a very good performance. Tony Todd had a great performance. Everyone in this movie was did their great job. Oh, yeah. Everybody was believable. Everybody played their role mm-hmm. fantastically. Yeah, so... 
This was a lot more of a thrilling movie than I had anticipated. Mm -hmm. But that that's because I knew so little. Mm -hmm. Like, I was expecting it to be like a horror love story. <laughs> and it turned out to not really be that case. And I'm glad that I was wrong. So, what do... What the uh, horror... Um, what type of movie would you consider this being? Uh, a horror drama? A horror thriller. A horror thriller. There we go. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. And a uh, horror psychological thriller. <laughs> kind of supernatural psychological thriller. <laughs> um, who do you, Who was your favorite character? Do you really need to ask? <laughs> it's probably the same as mine. <laughs> What's yours, then? Candyman. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> Like, yes. Helen was a good second place. Oh, yeah. Though. <laughs> um, no. Cop number three. Oh, Stunning performance from <laughs> cop number three. <laughs> no, of course it's going to be fucking Tony Todd. <laughs> I, I want to say that this was his breakout role. He had been in some other stuff, yeah. including like Star Trek The Next Generation and Platoon. But uh, this uh, was clearly where he, he landed on the map. Um, I believe he plays... Uh, in the remake of uh, Night of the Living Dead, he plays um, uh, the head... The token black guy. Yeah. Who... The leader of the... <laughs> uh, I can't remember what his name was. Uh, I'm looking it up because it is listed. Uh, ben. Ben, yeah. Ben is the name of the character. And that came out before this movie. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. This movie got a grand total of three sequels across the two decades since it's been out. Mm -hmm. And one Three movie. decades. Oh, wow. <laughs> Granted, the first two came out in the 90s, so within a decade. But yeah. then, then you got the 2021 movie that came out mm -hmm. almost 30 years after the fact. Which is... Uh, yes, the... About the remake, we'll probably have to discuss that one when we get there, but there's all these different people being Candyman. Yeah, I did uh, do a little looking into it, and it turns out it's, it is a sequel rather than a remake. Yeah, because Tony Todd shows up. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that is, that is, I, I had heard good, heard good things about the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully we get around to that and the other Candyman movies, because I want to see them, because... Oh yeah, we, we, we can do it, but... You know. do, doing some research, uh, apparently there were a couple attempts at uh, making uh, crossover movies a la Freddy vs. Jason. Okay. I think one was uh, Candyman vs. Hellraiser, which never went anywhere. Mm -hmm. There was a... Uh, uh, Candyman versus Leprechaun, which Tony Todd was like, no. <laughs> no. I respect this character too much to let that happen. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing two Candyman Freddy. Because two, like, they actually have, like, powers of sorts. But, you know, the, uh, the whole Candyman versus Hellraiser idea does make sense on paper, considering that both are Cl Clive Barker stories. Oh, okay. So... The Hellbound Heart. Yes. <laughs> Never read that book, but the Hell, but the first Hellraiser movie and first and second are pretty damn good. Do <laughs> uh, you consider those the start of the slight torture porn? I mean, one could argue that, but I I think Saw was really where that started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they were in Hellraiser. It's more it's, psychosexual. It's, exactly. Exactly. Um. What was your favorite kill? Uh, in Candyman? Mm -hmm. I think the one that surprised me the most? The 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 dog? Yeah, the dog would be... Because, again, I, I, I didn't... I thought this was more like a, a romantic horror movie. Mm -hmm. So when... So when he... Ba so when it turns out Candyman threw Helen under the bus, like, right away, I was like, oh. Oh, this is... Oh! Yeah. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Although a close second would be uh, Candyman killing the psychiatrist. No. <laughs> that one's also a pretty shocking scene. I would have to say the psychiatrist. Um, just the simple... He is in her head. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Just... She's seeing him when he's not even... Well, he's probably there. He's well. He's like a ghost of sorts. You, you yeah, think. <laughs> a spirit of sorts. A spirit of vengeance. 
or or no, no romance. <laughs> He's a horny ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the succubus way. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. I remember watching this as a kid. <laughs> Freaked me the fuck out when I, because I didn't understand. But as an adult, like, this is a great, this has got a great story. It's, it's a great fucking movie. <laughs> I was enthralled pretty much the entire time. Mm-hmm. It's like, I love how it's like set into two parts. One focusing on Helen trying to disprove the urban legend and try and find out the truth behind it. And then the second half where the urban legend's like, nah, uh I won't be dismissed that easily. (laughs) Bitch, no. My story's gotta be told. (laughs) It's like, ooh. (laughs) Oh, God, yes. If If we ever did a star rating, what would you rate it? Five. Yep. Five out of five. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. It was really damn good. Ten. Fucking ten. <laughs> <laughs> ten stars out of five. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes. Uh, I would have to agree. It would have to be a five star. Uh, it's like the eeriness. The Just the way Tony Todd can play this character is so eerie and sexual all at the same time. He never becomes super aggressive. No. Like, he has a calm demeanor about him, even even in the most harrowing situations for his character. And, you know, if you think about it, that's scarier than a psycho going, ah! <laughs> Just Yeah! Like <laughs> or, like, a mute yep. <laughs> mute character like Jason or a wisecracker like Freddy. It's just like, this, this guy... <laughs> It's like, you, you know, he don't give a fuck who you are. You're getting a hook up through, up through the chin. <laughs> Unless you don't want to. Yeah, exactly. He's like, he kills who he wants to kill. He'll deal with them in his own way. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. I. If you guys have never seen this movie, look it up. You'll enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm glad I have finally had the opportunity <laughs> to watch this movie. It's fantastic. <laughs> When you told me you've never seen this movie, I'm like, all right, you know what? Fuck it. we got to do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are plenty of horror movies that are so legendary and <laughs> famous that I've never seen. <laughs> yeah, you haven't seen Texas Chainsaw 2. Yeah, I know. I, I, The first one is fantastic, though. <laughs> Praise the hell out of that one. <laughs> and, and you've seen the remake? <laughs> I have seen one of the remakes. One of the numerous remakes. <laughs> The remakes. Like, to be fair, that was that was new. I was young enough to fu- actually go into an R-rated yeah. movie mm-hmm. on my own, <laughs> and I still didn't see it in a theater because <laughs> the person I was going to go see it with never showed up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I had to what wait. It is. So I had to wait until it came out on DVD to watch it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you. Like this movie, then? Oh hell yeah! yeah I, I enjoy it as well. Um, so <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> Where the fuck did that come from? I didn't feel uh, gassy inside, <laughs> inside your stomach. Yeah. That's usually where burps come from. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Um, I guess I really don't have much more to say about this. But once again, if you haven't seen it, go see it. It. Might not be some people's cup of tea, but you know, it's because some people just might prefer like the Jason and going it's chop, chop, chop. Yeah, but not for a slower burn, more mm-hmm. psychological. It film. makes you watch and listen more. It's like you, you're a raptor <laughs> yeah. the entire time. <laughs> like it does a fantastic job with the atmosphere without being super, like, super overtly creepy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, like, what would you consider Tony Todd's role in this compared to him as Re- Reverend Zombie? A much, this is a much better role. <laughs> I mean, granted, Reverend Zombie is a schlock character in a yeah. schlock movie. <laughs> yeah. We, Hatchet 2 definitely could have been better. I mean, give me Scare Glow over Reverend Zombie. There you go. <laughs> I don't know, for some reason, for a while, I kept thinking that he voiced Hordak in 
in Ma in Masters of the Universe Revela Revolution, but no, that was Keith David, another fantastic African American actor. Oh, Keith voice David actor. does a very good job at voice acting. Yeah, and, so, and, I, and I regular don't know, acting too. I don't. I just don't know why I thought Tony Todd, even though I knew he voiced Scarecrow. Well, he, he, they both got that that kind of blower tone voice. Yeah. So. I mean, they I don't see... sound enough alike for me no. to mistake it. But it's like a cool villain. Exactly. exactly. They both play cool villains. <laughs> oh. Uh, he also played the Fallen in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. He did? Yes. Huh. <laughs> I, I bet you didn't watch that movie enough to care who voiced who. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> that movie's got Spongebob in it. It does. <laughs> <laughs> and Frank Welker. <laughs> yeah, but... That's a given in a Transformers movie. <laughs> Except the first one. That one didn't have Frank Welker. No. Uh, so... I suppose... Till next time, everyone. I've been Tank. I'm proud of it. See ya. Bye. Bye.